Able's in on air is sponsored by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support comes together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners with Ableton On Air include Yachad, New York, and New England, where everyone belongs, and the Orthodox Union. Abel Dinonair has been seen in the following publications. Parkchester Times, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, and www.h.com. Ableton On Air is a member of the National Academy for Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter. Welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able for the past eight years. I've been your host, Lauren Seiler. Arlene is here today. On our television program today, we will focus on, on um, Muslim leader uh, Sheke Musa Drame. Sheke Musa Drame is a religious leader and community activist who focuses on public health and safety and pulling youth out of gangs. And he is also the publisher of the Muslim Community Report newspaper, Parkchester Times, New York Parrot, and the Muslim. Uh, um, the Muslim Press Group. We would like to thank um, Shikay Musa Drame for joining us on this edition of Able to Learn Air. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me on your show one more time again. Okay. So let's um, get, uh, you know, let's uh, talk about um, what exactly is your position being in the journalism field um, on what's going on, especially in Israel? Well, Larry, as I um, explained in our previous um, <coughs> recording, our media network was established as a result of are being able to counter the toxic narratives from Islamic extremist ideologies. And we were, uh, we thought that uh, since they use, you know, the media effectively globally, uh, in order to counter their narratives, their toxic, misleading, deadly narratives, we should also be uh, in the media field and that was the impetus for creating Muslim Media Corporation and since the launching of it we have been consistently editorializing peace building you know good relationship and the support for a peaceful coexistence among all people especially between the Jews and the Arabs uh, on the Holy Land Mm -hmm. So so we continue uh, with our mission of peace building and, you know, uh, uh, relationship building and creating harmonious relationship among people, but most importantly, being able to immediately counter <coughs> any, you know, publicized version of their demonic ideology. For those who don't know um, about terrorism and what it is, and you know, I know we had 9/11 and all of that. What is an Islamic extremist, if I may ask that question? Yeah, 
Yes, I will rephrase it to say... You make it simpler for our special needs viewers, if you can. Absolutely. I say I will rephrase it to ask the question as, what is extremism? What Extreme, is extremism, okay. Extremism. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Extremism, whether they are political extremism, religious extremism, cultural extremism, or ethnic extremism. You know, extremists are individuals and groups, you know, who have very, very narrow-minded interpretation of anything that they are part of. And they usually <laughs> use whatever they deem uh, to be the most accurate version of that which they uh, believe and promote, no matter how evil it is, no matter how idiotic, no matter how deadly or toxic it is, they just concentrate on believing it and promoting it to order. And unfortunately, it's very, very difficult, you know, to have a meaningful and reasonable you know, dialogue with them when they are intoxicated with this extremist ideology. Mm -hmm. So, take me back um, a couple of days ago, this, well, Gaza, back in 1948, when it first uh, came, uh, you know, when Israel became a state, it wasn't what it is now. It was uh, beautiful farmland, b trees, you know, tree-lined streets, you know, very beautiful uh, kibbutzes, uh, farms, you know, all because of uh, Ben Gurion and um, and the mindset of Golda Meir. So why did it? go complete, if I may say, go completely backwards. And, you know, if people, example, if people are living in someone's house, or, or people are living, because in Jerusalem, people are living in, you know, if you're living in someone's house and you're told to get out and it's not your house, why are you stealing the house? So... Why is people's mindset that way if it wasn't the mindset back in 1948 when Israel became a state? Well, you know, Larry, um, I am the least expert, you know, in the affairs of the Holy Land, Israel, Palestinian issues. However, you know, as an African Muslim and as a New Yorker, um, who experience uh, what extremism can do. Uh, I am very, very much interested um, as a peacemaker as well, you know, to see a peaceful coexistence, um, you know, in the Holy Land. Now, every person, almost every person, especially stakeholders, they have very rigid position concerning the Holy Land. If you are pro-Israelis, you, are, you may have a rigid position. If you are pro-Palestinian, you may have a rigid position. And, and to a point where some of them don't even entertain um, a different version than that which they... Yeah, um, there's, always, there's always two sides to every story, sir. Exactly. But what I'm saying is, whichever side you are on, in most cases, is the side that you just remain in an echo chamber. However, um, you know, uh, if, regardless of how you feel about the state of Israel, as you alluded, uh, compare the lifestyle and the standard of living and the development uh, in 2021 compared to 1947-48, it is like day and night. Now, regardless of how one feels about the state of Israel, one thing that no one can deny is, you know, the, the, the inventiveness, the innovativeness, and the leadership, and the socioeconomic development that these people who came and lived in kibbutzim, you know, they, uh, you know, change, you know, the, the soil so that, you know, they can create some of the miracles of agriculture. And then they 
you know, go to Tel Aviv and Jerusalem, and they completely overhaul, you know, the you know prehistoric living standards uh, and bring it up to the most modern, most advanced, you know, society in the world. So, you know, these are noble achievements, it, noble development. Exactly, my. A little bit my point, because when the Nazis, we're talking about World War Two, and the night of broken glass, okay, when it, the Nazis were also jealous of when a Jewish person had a business, a uh, butcher shop, uh, 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 a, a, a shoe shine place, you know, clothing store or, or whatever, they would break the windows. It was called Kristallnacht. They would break the windows of the Jewish person's business and take everything away from them. Is this something similar to... I know I'm supposed to remain... Uh, but, you know, you know, I'm supposed to remain neutral here. But is, is this something similar to that, or is this having anything to do with maybe some jealousy between the Palestinians and Israel? No, I don't think so. It's a totally different issue. Um, you know, again, uh, whichever camp you are in, then the other ones is, uh, you know, the perpetrator. Whichever camp, you know, right or wrong, true or false, Again, if you're pro-Israeli, then, you know, the Palestinians, uh, the Gazans, uh, everybody is, you know, terrorism, you know, bad people, whatever. And then if you are pro-Palestinian or you're in Gaza, then you're fighting, you know, aggression and occupation, and some would go as far as apartheid. So it all depends on which side one is. But mm-hmm. the fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, the Holy Land belongs to the people who live there. And I believe the sooner they figure out how they can, you know, uh, peacefully coexist there, the better it is. Now, whatever that may mean, one state solution, two state solution, whatever it is, you know, the sooner the better. Now, uh, me as a, a peacemaker from the outside, uh, you know, looking in, you know, I always advocate for the state of uh, for, the, uh, for, the, for the state of Egypt, Syria, Jordan, and Lebanon to really rearrange their colonial trace borders so that the, the two-state solution can be accommodated comfortably, peacefully, and economically, um, you know, in the Holy Land. But at this juncture, you know, it is very difficult to create two state solution where all the Palestinians, I mean the Palestinians and the Jews and you know the Jews and everybody else really intermingle in tiny quarters. So I don't know how it's going to happen, but um, you know I hope that you know the neighboring countries, you know, will do the Palestinian uh, Palestinian favor and you know agree to rearrange. The borders that were not there prior to colonialism, you know, it was. So I believe that um, you know, you know, it can be done if these four countries really love the Palestinians as much as they may hate the Israelis. That is my take as question. an outsider. Dave, looking. you want to ask a question? Mm-hmm. Um, real quick, uh, I'm going to do one more comment, and then my wife wants to ask a question. Um. Uh-huh quick thing in terms of this well especially when you have children that uh, that are in the middle of this because children are also dying from the rockets and everything else when you have children and people with special needs and and other infirm populations um, dying because of this it becomes a, a whole nother issue because one, one of the things that are happening also you know, some of the extremists, they put their children in front of them figuring, okay, nobody's going to kill their kid but or kill their child. But 
you know, that's a whole other issue. You have anything to say about the, the young children dying, you know, the young populations passing away because of this too? You know, um, Israel or Palestine or any other place, they should never ever be subject to a situation where their homes have bunkers or safety rooms because somebody else will throw a bomb or rocket on them. Nobody, mm -hmm. nobody deserves it. So, you know, you go to Israel, you visit some homes, or you, you visit homes, especially homes that are closer to the border, and all of them have safe rooms that children are taught as young as four, five, six. To How to kill, and, yeah. To run as fast as they can to go to this bunker. That is absolutely unacceptable. So that's why whatever needs to be done to making sure that the threat um, that is looming over these homes will be eliminated once and for all. And also, also on Palestinian television, I've I've seen clips, and this this is on YouTube, which was, which is absolutely ridiculous. On Palestinian TV, you have people dressing up as um characters such as Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse, you know, with masks and thing, teaching their kids how to shoot guns. That's a whole nother thing, also. You know, there are extremists on both sides. It depends on what you are, which side you are on. And they are, they are very, very vicious extremists on both sides. And unfortunately, when you are in the ideology of extremism, unfortunately, you have very less restriction as to, you know, honoring the sanctity of life or the dignity of others or the protection of the public. So that is unfortunate. That's why peace building and peacemakers must be given opportunities to really continue on their work. You know, the, uh, you know that place is a holy place to most people. I say most people in the world. Therefore, it is to everybody's best interest, you know, to see peaceful coexistence so that, you know, Arab children or Jewish children will not be radicalized to a point where they hate the others to a point where they want to kill them or they celebrate when when others die. So, you know, we all need to work on uh, bringing peaceful coexistence, sanctity of life, respect, and, you know, protecting dignity uh, of each other. And that is mm -hmm. the only thing. Well, Anything else is just which side uh, of the issue you're looking, you're looking from. Okay, my wife wanted to ask a question. Go ahead. Um... <coughs> Hold on. Oh. Um, um, you know, the, the, the Arabs are destroying our synagogues, which isn't right, and then they go ahead and drop bombs anywhere else. But a good thing Israel is going to fix this Hamas. Can you explain um, what, pe what, what Hamas is? For those who don't know, I know it's an extremist group, but uh, now that now they're also bombing um, religious institutions such as synagogues and mosques. You know, these labels uh, are attached to the groups uh, by uh, by others, and you know, I La know yeah, labels labels for. You know, labels are pres pres prescription bottles, not people, but go ahead. Exactly. So, um, again, um, the, you know, uh, uh, you know the, the Palestinians, just like, you know, the, Israel, the, the Jews, are very diverse in their thinking. They have different positions, uh, and they have different mission, and some would want nothing more than to live peacefully and to see the Holy Land become a place where all the residents can coexist and do business with each other. And if you look at the reason, you know, um, Abraham Accord, that tells you they are hungry for such a development. But in terms of Hamas and everything, again, you know, you have, you know, you have extremists on both, both sides of the issue. But you have the majority 
uh, on both sides of the issue that pray you know, for their children not to ever experience such a level of hatred or to be placed in such a dangerous predicament. So, you know, our, our goal here is to be peacemakers and to, 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 to really, um, you know, stop the, 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 the labeling and whatever. And, you know, whoever, you know, is, 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 is committed to destroying the other side, then, then those are the extremists and those are the ones that don't deserve any support or any association, whether, you know, they're Hamas or whether they're from, you know, the very, very right wing, you know, Israeli groups. So, you know, it depends, it depends on which group we're talking about. The bottom line is, you know, we need peace and we need a more harmonious relationship on the Holy Land. It is holy, not only to the Jews and Arabs, but to almost two thirds of the world population. Okay, um, let's get to the local issues. Um, we know that you, uh, with Parkchester Times uh, and New York Parrot, can you talk about what you're doing locally to help peacemaking? Yes, absolutely. You know, um, you, know uh, you know it as much as I do or even better. The media has almost unchecked power. I mean, the media can dictate how people behave uh, on a daily basis. The media can make um, uh, people love each other or they can make people be divided from one another. And to have this such powerful force in our lives, I thought that we should be part of it because we are peacemakers. We want nothing but bringing people together. That's why we refuse, you know, to publish, you know, articles that are designed to bring people down. That sometimes even when people are... Or, or there, there's a word for that, Shaked. It's called belittle. When you belittle somebody and bring them down, oh, you're, oh, you're dumb, you're this, you're that, you, uh, something like you won't be able to finish uh, finish school you know you're you know when they use the word dumb stupid and other words like for example years uh, I always tell my students certain words they they stop using like the word uh, the all word which is retard uh, the word feeble feeble minded and other words describing people with disabilities or people with special needs. When when doctors stopped using that, they stopped using those things across the board because, it, you know, that's just uh, the uh, uh, a right wing part of society. You know, a person with an intellectual challenge can go to school. There's ways now. They, it, they can have work, you know, they can be employable. So when you put, when you put this, D-I-S, in front of able, this means not. So when you, when, when you say handicap or stuff like that, um, you know, words hurt, like you say labels. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, that's why... You know, uh, any time you want me on your show, I'm excited because you have been able to turn, you know, what other people would have regard, you know, as disabled. Uh, you make it into abled and you empower people and you spread the message of equality and respect for all. And we need people or more people like you in many different places because a lot of people, they may say dumb things, but they don't mean it because they don't know any better. Mm -hmm. so if you educate them, a lot of people will take advantage of that knowledge that you infuse in them. So that's why you and I must continue on with this journey of dispelling, you know, these myths about people and these labels and, you know, these uh, belittling, you know, other people. Because every time you do these things, you are denying people their human dignity, their human value, 
and the human work. I mean, and why can't example? I, I mean, uh, this might be a little extreme. I mean, as far as my thinking is concerned, uh, um, example. But do you know that uh, you know the show Shark Tank? Yes. Yes. People go in there with ideas, hoping to get a deal, and, and um, you know, own a business or have a business. And, and what's to say a person with a special need can't be a millionaire or, or have a business and be able to give people chances to own a business? You know, um, there, there's a small percentage of people in the United States who are well off, you know, but giving people chances and mentoring them in those chances um, and giving them chances to own a business is the way things should be. You know, they they have um, situations where people work at home and, and they have a business, uh, but, it, it, but they always put people with special needs in catchment or catch all areas of um it's a horrible word that's used there's a horrible word that's used in hollywood and that is uh, you know hollywood in terms of movies um and that is pigeonhole pigeonhole means putting people in a group and keeping them in that group but not giving them a chance to come out of that group so example when when you have an actor that oh uh, um if you have a special needs uh, person who, or a challenged person who um, is in Hollywood trying to make it as an actor, and you put that person in a role such as a person in a wheelchair, or a, per, a, a, um, a person that's homeless, or something like that, you're pigeonholing them, you're, you're not giving them a chance to to fly to other to other types of roles. You have anything you want to say about how the media deals with that too? Well, you know, there there is a saying that people live up to expectation. Mm-hmm. If you label people and you know you make them feel that they are not worthy or they are not capable or they are not smart enough or they're not strong enough, or they don't have all the attributes required to get the job done. Some will fall for it, and some will look at themselves and say, I I can't do it because I don't have this, I don't have that. And then someone like you come along and say, no, you have everything you need because we are different. Now, you may not have this and that, but that does not mean, uh, mean you cannot achieve your goals, uh, goals and objectives. So people do different, uh, people do things differently. So therefore, if you don't have this, you have the other thing. If you cannot do this, you can do other things. But every one of us is capable of meeting certain goals that we set. But that's why for you, you know, to 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 to, to remove all these labels and you know, uh, you know, it's very commendable because. You are telling people, regardless of who you are, where you are, what you look like, you can do it because you have uh, you have it within you, and that is what we need to have more of. Even our children, if you continue to reinforce negative um, attributes, they will grow up, you know, behaving exactly as you describe them. But if you you know, always praise them and encourage them and challenge them. They will also grow up uh, knowing and believing that they can conquer the world. Yeah, people always feel sorry for them too. Mm-hmm. So, 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 what you're doing, what I'm doing, and what many other, you know, individuals who are enabling folks, you know, these are the services that are, um, you know, important that are praiseworthy and that need to be you know a carpet far and wide so you and i have a lot of work to do but you and i are doing yeah, trust me our our work is never done uh 
uh, uh, Mr. Drame. <laughs> Our work will never be done, you know. Um. Anyway, um, anything else you want to say before we end about New York, about New York Parrot and Park Chester Times and, and your and your media corporation? Yes, I want to begin, I mean, I want to end where we begin, which is the challenges that... We yeah, where do we, where do we see this um, peacemaking in the future? When we are as prepared and as committed and, you know, as excited as the troublemakers. Unfortunately, what happened is that the troublemakers make all the noise... You know, they, they create all the havoc, while the majority of the citizens who are, you know, peace-loving, who are neighbor-loving, you know, who have nothing to do with uh, hatred, violence, but they're quiet. And if you're quiet, you're giving license to troublemakers. And that's why I refuse to be quiet. I refuse to be silent. I refuse to give them the license to use my silence to continue to commit mischief and divide people and hurt other people. So when the majority of you know ordinary peace-loving people became as excited and as committed and as loud as the minority troublemakers, we will turn this unfortunately ugly world into the most beautiful, gorgeous mosaic. And that is our mission. And that's why you and I are always on the forefront of bridging, build, uh, I mean, building bridges and bringing together and call evil where evil exists and then praise people when they deserve to be praised. We would like to thank Shakeh Musa Drame, Muslim leader, uh, for joining us on this edition of Able to On Air. For more information on his work, you can go to www.afcfp.org That's American Friends for Combatants for Peace. So the website again is www.afcfp.org American Friends for Combatants for Peace and for more information on um, Shikai Musa Drama's work also, you can go to www.parkchestertimes.com or newyorkparrot.com as well as the Muslim Community Report. Again, this puts an end to this edition of Able to On Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. Arlene is here today. She, she would also like to thank um, our sponsors, Green Mountain Support Services, Washington County Mental Health, and many, many, many others for supporting Able to Learn Air. Also, Able to Learn Air is a um, proud member of the National Academy for Television, Arts, and Sciences, uh, uh, Boston, New England chapter. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Able to Learn Air. I'm Lawrence Seiler. See you next time. Ableton On Air is sponsored by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support comes together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners with Able to On Air include Yachad New York and New England, where everyone belongs, and the Orthodox Union. Able to On Air has been seen in the following publications. Parkchester Times, 
New York Parrot online newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, and www.h.com. Ableton On Air is a member of the National Academy for Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter.